and welcome to the Paulding County School District's Advanced Placement Information Session. I am Keith Rowland, Executive Director of 612 Teaching and Learning, and am joined by Irina Keith, the Gifted and Advanced Programs Coordinator for our school district. We will focus on two areas for our presentation. First, we will provide an overview of the Advanced Placement Program also referred to as AP program, including considerations for students as they select courses. Second, we will discuss AP exams for our current and future AP students. If you have any questions during our presentation, we will have a link for you to submit those at the end of today's video. Irina, will you share some more information about the AP programs in our school district? We are happy to share that all five of our high schools have been named State AP Honor Roll Schools for 2023. In a recent school district press release, Paulding County Superintendent Steve Barnett stated, It's truly impressive to see all five Paulding County high schools recognized as AP Honor Roll Schools, and all of them recognized in multiple categories. Steve Barnett goes on to say, exposure to advanced placement courses will help ensure our students are prepared for success today and tomorrow. To see all five high schools recognized by the state is a real credit to our instructional focus and shows that our schools are committed to preparing students for future success. These recognitions were earned through AP participation and achievement on AP exams. Let me share a little bit of information about how AP exams are scored. AP exams are scored on a five-point scale. The scores demonstrate how qualified a student is to earn credit and placement. For example, if students earn a score of three on an AP exam, the College Board considers them qualified to receive college credit and placement. Most colleges nationwide provide college credits if a student scores three and above. Students who earn AP exam scores of one or two often earn a higher score on the next AP exams they take, and they're more likely to attend college and graduate on time than students who don't take AP. And here's how Paulding County School students scored on their AP exams in 2022. 62% of AP exams earn scores of three and above. 86% of exams earn scores of two and above. The total number of exams taken in May 2022 was 1,193. Students who are motivated to succeed and who are academically prepared for the specific course are the best AP candidates. These students can then gain advantages through their high school AP experiences. As already mentioned, students can potentially earn college credit for introductory college courses, which in turn saves time and money. Highly competitive colleges and universities value AP courses on high school transcripts. Students may set themselves apart from others during the college application process with AP. We always remind parents and students to check with the colleges being considered for the specific courses and exam scores required for credit at that institution. We invited a former high school student to come and share her experiences in the Paulding County School District. Rachel graduated from East Paulding High School. She is currently pursuing her degree from Georgia Institute of Technology, Georgia Tech. Rachel, what would you like to share about your experiences with AP when you were in high school? Yeah, so one thing that I really enjoyed about my AP classes, I took two my junior year and three my senior year. And so what that allowed me to do was get college credit while still having my high school experience. Um, so still getting to hang out with my high school friends in my AP classes. Um, and so that just was a really fun time for me. And being in AP kind of allowed me to have a close-knit group of friends um, that I may not have had otherwise. So I really enjoyed that aspect. 
And how did this benefit you upon graduation from high school? Yeah, so AP classes are more rigorous than your normal high school class. Um, and so what that did was kind of allowed it to be like a step ladder into the college courses. So you have your high school classes, AP, and then college. And so it kind of helped me be used to the college workload. Um, so it kind of helped me learn how to study for college classes and how to make sure that I knew everything that was going on and keep me organized and learn time management as well. So what advice would you give our current high school students as well as upcoming freshmen? One thing I would say to really anybody, um, whether it's deciding what you're going to do in college or in general, is to always follow your heart because you know you best. Um, so try not to let others influence the decisions that you're making. What great advice. Thank you so much, Rachel, for coming here. And we really appreciate you sharing your experience with AP courses. It will be very beneficial to our students while they're making their decisions about moving forward. Your students' primary contact at their school for course registration is their counselor. Counselors have shared some advice with students interested in AP courses. They generally tell students that these are not easy classes. They take a great deal of time and effort. Students will have to study and do work outside of class. Once they're enrolled in an AP course and the semester has started, the counselors cannot change their schedule to allow them to drop the course. They go on to recommend that parents discuss with students their workload in other classes, their extracurricular work commitments, and their time management abilities when determining course enrollment. Now, we will transition to the second goal of our presentation and discuss the upcoming AP exams. This information should be helpful to our current AP students. The AP exams for all high school students will take place in May 2023, regardless of the semester in which they took their AP course. The AP exams must be administered on specific dates and times as pub published by College Board. Here is this spring's schedule. Students who are planning on taking AP exams this May must join their AP classroom online, myapcollegeboard.org. The AP teacher would have provided the join code to enroll in their AP classroom. This resource is important for two reasons. First, this is where the high school places an order for AP exams. Second, this is a great resource for AP courses. Students could practice free response questions and view AP daily videos. All AP videos can be watched on any device that has internet access. Progress Dashboard, for example, demonstrates progress students are making across multiple units. Please talk to your AP teacher and ask for the specific resources for their class. Each AP exam costs $105. If a student is on a free or reduced lunch, the first AP exam, any exam, is free. Additional AP exams for students on a free or reduced lunch are $53. If a student is taking science, math, STEM exam, the first STEM exam is free for any student, not necessarily a student on a free or reduced lunch. Please contact your AP coordinator about how your specific school accepts payments for the exams. We would like to share a few more helpful resources, such as steps on how to pick AP courses, how to match college majors and careers with AP courses, how to check your college's credit policy, and information for parents about understanding AP. You will be able to download a file with additional resources after this presentation. Our goal in the Paulding County School System is to offer opportunities that meet the hopes and dreams of all students. While this video is specifically about our Advanced Placement Program, we recognize it is not the only option for students. Students can be successful, supported, and prepared for their next steps through a multitude of other areas in addition to AP. If you have any questions about courses or exams at one of our high schools, please contact your counselor or the AP coordinators at that site. 
Please remember to submit any questions through the link provided. We will respond to all questions as soon as possible. Thank you for joining us for this video. We hope that we were able to provide some helpful information and always encourage you to reach out to your school or the district with questions.